Hey guys, your girl Nash. Thank you so much for being back to my channel. If you have not already, please go ahead and do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you always know when I post a video. So, this meme. <laughs> Which I posted this meme literally in 2017. Like, um, I really I have a personal Instagram. So, this is like my um, vlogger Instagram. And I really have not updated it like in, I think two two years or something but i'm gonna start interacting a little bit more with it so if you guys ever want to send me a message or something you can hit me up on this instagram it's just the handle it's the real najwa i might not respond back very quickly but um yeah it is there if you guys need me okay so let's talk about this guys if your woman is being cold with you i am speaking in binary norms I am married to a man who's like the gender is a man and I'm a woman but I feel like this can apply to basically any relationships because it's basically just uh, about emotional intelligence this video this can also apply if you're not married like if you're just in a, a regular normal relationship so um, LGBTQ people love you still and this you can also watch this if you have a partner who's being cold to you and they're not really explaining what's going on. Let's just start with, you know, internet culture because I saw this, this YouTube video the other day and it was a guy um, and he was talking about how um, like he doesn't like it when women don't put up the goods the goods you know and they're not telling the man what they did wrong there's this whole um sort of self-help advice culture that's almost come alive through social media you see those hashtags everywhere couple goals and stuff so basically me you know i got married and it i had to kiss a lot of frogs to get to my prince even though he's an angel he's not perfect you know everybody is not perfect and so um, I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book, a small book, just basically to help other millennials out there who might be looking for love and they're running into issues because I seriously believe that millennials, we, we have intimacy issues. I think we have intimacy issues because guys, it's like we've lived through essentially, you know, a lot of economic uh, upheaval. We've lived through COVID. We've lived through the technology boom. We've lived through Black Lives Matter. I mean, we, we've just faced so much up and down, like roller coaster in our life that I feel like, I don't know, millennials and Gen Z, it's almost like we, we really shade love. We shade it. So I kind of just want to be a resource to help people and to let them know like there is hope out there. It's okay. If your wife or your woman is being cold, and then when I say cold, um, in the manner of her speaking, if what she, her responses to you are very short, if they're just sort of yes, no, or even grunt, you know, if you're trying to strike up a conversation with her and all you get is a grunt in return, I would be cold by that. If she is not really wanting to hang out with you, she's not wanting to go on that normal dates that you guys go to, not wanting to go see your parents, she's not wanting to even just like sit down and watch a movie with you, you know, like have some quality Netflix and chill time, that's being cold. Um, if the, the bedroom is cold, that's being cold. So there's a lot of ways that I feel like women can be cold, but if you're watching this, you probably landed on this video for a reason, so you already know what that coldness is. What you have to understand, and I'm mostly talking to men here, I'm mostly talking to men because I see that a lot of men are researching this stuff on YouTube, they're researching this this help, this self-help, this um, relationship advice, but it's usually like they they really gravitate towards men's men's channels. Don't you feel like if you're trying to get some insight into what's going on with your woman, why wouldn't you go to women themselves? Seeking out the source of help from the perspective of the type of person who you're having difficulty understanding. Don't you think that that would be the smartest thing to do? So my first recommendation, at least to men out there in heterosexual relationships with women, and she's cold or she's giving you problems or whatever, go and listen to what women have to say. Even when men confide in one another, like yes, men do confide in one another, and that's what a lot of women don't know. So for the women out here watching this, men do talk about their emotions with their men friends. I'm speaking from experience, from experience of dating, 
from being married, from talking to my own girlfriends, my own friends who are in relationships. I'm just saying from that perspective. Seek out the source of the person that you're like uh, the the type of person that you're trying to understand. After that, if you want to um, understand where your where your woman is coming from, you basically need to be very very humble. It doesn't mean that you have to get down on all fours, but as my mom, my grandma used to say, you will catch a whole lot more flies with honey than with vinegar. If you're just going to your woman and you're being really, really sort of arrogant, you're being very stubborn and egotistical, boisterous, you know, if you're just like basically gaslighting whatever she's trying to tell you is wrong, um, because at some point that's most likely the problem. It's like, they're like, I don't know what the problem is if you don't tell me. She has told you or he has told you. Trust me, they have let you know what the problem is. It's just that you weren't coming to from the place to really, really hear it, to really listen. You might see your partner being uh, selfish. You might label your partner as being the one who's being selfish and being the one who's not coming from a good place here. But um, really, really try to tap into that humility and just you know, be calm, be sweet, be kind, um, and, and and approach them in a way that's, you know, caring, that says that you really want to know what the problem is and address it. So, for example, um, catch her or him um, when they're not super busy. So don't catch them when they're really um, into their work, if they're doing some work. Don't catch them when they're cleaning the house. Don't catch them when they're, you know, cooking dinner or whatever. Catch them when they're just like, you know, either laying in the bed, sitting on the couch, you know, relax. Catch them when they're in a relaxed moment. And that way you can come to them relaxed as well. And just remember to try and be, um, you know, like monitor the level of your voice. Are you talking really loud? Don't be sarcastic. Just those very common sense things like just really try to understand what the problem is because if this is the person that you love you know we're not talking about booty calls here if this is the person that you love you want them to be happy and you want to really know what the root of the problem is the next thing is try and be intuitive really use your critical thinking skills and i know for the women out there watching that you guys are probably like jesus we really should not have to spoon feed this to men like this but we're not cut from the same cloth. We're different type of creatures. You know, men are analytical and logical by nature and women are more creative. They're more flexible by nature. Of course, like that is not the, the, the say all and be all. That's not the end of it. There are different standards. You know, there are some men who hold a lot of feminine energy. There's some men who hold a lot of masculine energy, but nobody wants to be all feminine or all masculine. Think about the yin yang symbol you know there's a little dot of dark and light and there's a little dot of light and dark and that's kind of the way you want to be you may think to yourself she didn't really let me know what the problem was i don't even know what what she's on about i don't know like what her problem is think about the last time that you guys were in a good place you know think about the last time that you were happy laughing together whatever that is and then think about where you are now okay so we got that okay so you can maybe say you were in a happy place like yesterday evening okay let's just say it's it's 4 p.m on a tuesday and at mon on monday at 7 p.m you guys were okay but by 9 p.m she was shading you she was not she she like she wasn't happy okay so that means yesterday on monday sometime between 7 p.m and 9 p.m you did something okay just maybe she did something too maybe but let's put the blame game aside for a moment and just think about what you did and what you can do the first part of really truly giving yourself in love is being selfless and so if you cannot recognize where you have fault and most likely somewhere in there you know what you did that's why that meme is there you know you know what you did in there somewhere it's just that your ego is really not letting you get to that problem. So if it was Monday between 7 and 9, where that's where it switched off. Like happy, loving, warm, cuddling all up, switched to super cold, you know. 
what happened in those times? Did you, um, you know, okay, so speaking from, from my marriage, you know, some of the things that we have disputes about are, you know, his, his family. Sometimes, you know, he wants to use me as a buffer to be with him and his family. He can go and spend time with his family on his own. He doesn't need me. So that, that can be a source of our disagreement. So maybe it was something with family, you know? Did you guys recently have a dinner with your parents, with the in-laws, um, with your friends? Was there some sort of moment maybe where she wanted you to stick up for her, but you didn't stick up for her? Um, just really, really use your critical thinking skills to see what it is, you know? And before you jump to conclusions, you know, before you get to the analytical part of it, just observe. Just use your brain as a little, you know, cinema, <laughs> a little cinema, and think about what happened. Before we get to analysis, before we get to how to fix the problem, just think for yourself, what did I do to piss this woman off? And, and, and I know, okay, here's one that's very, very easy for both men and women to resonate with. Cleaning. <laughs> different standards in a relationship about cleaning so um you know for for me for example with my husband who i love dearly and who is my heart but still does little things that drive me crazy and i do little things that drive him crazy so he will leave he will use a toothpick and he will leave his toothpicks everywhere everywhere i'm just i feel like i'm always finding toothpicks and that's one pet peeve of mine and me I will peel fruit like an orange or kiwi and I, me personally, I'll just leave that peel on the sink, you know, just sitting on the, the level of the sink because I know I can come back later and pick it up. Like when I'm eating and stuff and when I'm ready to eat, I'm ready to eat. So like I literally will just leave that fruit peel there and I'll come and throw it away later. I really will. But his definition of later and my definition of later might be two different things. He might come and pick that kiwi pill up in five minutes. Whereas me, I can leave it there for eight hours really and be okay. Because I know at some point I'm going to go and pick up that kiwi pill. Pill. Um, different strokes, guys. Different strokes. But when it comes to cleaning around the house, um, you know, maintenance around your apartment, whatever it is, um, in your living space, in your living space. Um, I know that this is, it can really be a point of contention for women. And often the biggest difficulty with women is they want to see you put in some effort. They want to see you be motivated to go and do something yourself instead of having to ask you. So me, whereas I will go and pick up that kiwi pill even after eight hours, those toothpicks might be there literally for a week unless I go and clean them up or I tell him to pick it up my, himself. So basically, think about what you can do, you know, just one day, maybe, you know, I don't know if you have a day off of work or on a Saturday when you have free time or a Sunday and your girlfriend or your wife or your boyfriend or your husband is still asleep, go clean the kitchen, you know, go sweep, go, go, go vacuum, pick up all of your little things that are hanging around and see if that won't make a big difference. So I feel like um, a huge amount of disputes come from cleaning and little maintenance things. The other thing that you have to remember is that you can't just do those things haphazardly over time and expect that really to resonate with your partner who has stated, you know, and usually when this is a problem, the, the maintenance and cleaning around the house, usually your partner or your woman has stated it in the past. I need your help. I can't take care of this apartment. I can't take care of this house on my own. So they have made that probably really clear every day if you can, every day if you can. Just pick up a little thing here, a little thing there, um, you know, and when you have more extended amount, if you have a more extended amount of time, do that more extended work, you know, go and sweep, go and dust, go and clean the kitchen, you know, don't, don't, don't let her or him, your partner, have to continually ask because what it seems like to that partner is that you're really not invested in your shared life. And you may think to yourself, it's just some socks that I left on the floor. Is it really that big of a deal? It's not about the socks. It's really about someone proving themselves to really be committed into everyday life with you. And I, I guarantee you, you know, like if you ever thought to a time where your partner has cleaned up for you, 
you know, and you, or cooked for you, or just done something for you, and you thought, oh my God, thank you, goodness, I, I knew I needed to do that, but I really didn't feel like doing it. Think about how relieved you felt. You really basically just need to be proactive enough to hypothesize what's wrong. Go back, use your critical thinking skills, backtrack on what's wrong, and after you have pinpointed what it was, you know, if it was, um, something to do with the outside world if it was something with family or friends or in-laws or something like that if it was something with your children for example if you have children if it was um, cleaning around the house it was if it, if it was that you forgot to do something um, that she or he or your partner had asked you to do several times um, once you have gotten to that point after that point there's something that you can do about it and it involves you basically having to retract your pause because as human nature goes, you know, when, when we're cornered or when we feel cornered, when we feel like antagonized and we feel like people are against us, and, and this goes to your partner too, but as my mom used to say when I was in school, you know, I would come home from school and she'd be like, hey, I heard you were drawing like profane cartoons in class with da 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 da. And I'm like, well, it's not my fault, da 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 did it too. And my mom would always be like, I'm not talking about da 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 da, I'm talking about Nashua, you know? <laughs> Maybe your partner was in the wrong as well, but all that you can do, all that you can do at this moment is for yourself you know you have to take responsibility for yourself and if you think about it from that perspective you know if you come from this from a really humble humble place you, I mean and it's not easy I know I'm saying this and I, it can see, seem very easy to say that um, it's not easy I know and it's just think of it as a practice you're not, it's not it's not gonna be perfect overnight you know and it's never gonna be perfect but Throughout a, a sustained amount of time in a relationship, in a marriage, if you keep working on that, you know, you keep working on being humble, being true to yourself, um, honoring your partner and your spouse, showing your spouse love, compassion, empathy, um, it's going to get easier and I guarantee you it's going to have a positive effect because if you think that your spouse is also at fault generally with these things as well, at some point, your your partner is going to take a look at themselves as well if you just take a look at yourself and come from a place of compassion and love and think about what you do your partner is going to do the same thing and if they don't that's when you need to call up your marriage counselor or you need to get on going <laughs> because two people in a marriage should be growing together you know it's like this but the moment that they're growing like this it's like yeah, call up, phone up your marriage therapist or yeah, maybe consider calling it quits. Guys, be intuitive. From there, you know, so once you've got it, once you've observed it, go and talk to the right people. Um, be humble. Be humble and look at what you can do. And after that, make amends, you know, really say that you are sorry and men really really have a problem with this i mean men find it so difficult to apologize and to apologize and make it really meaningful and guys if you want to be in a sustained relationship a sustained marriage you're gonna have to get used to saying sorry and you know what women say sorry a whole lot too but oftentimes that testosterone that testosterone that just gets in the way, they don't really hear it, you know. So if you think that, you know, your woman has said, um, you, you, you know, if you apologize and you're like, why am I always the one that has to apologize? If you think back on some occasions and you weren't working from your ego, but you were working from your heart, you know, you were operating from that heart, that selflessness, that self-love and that, that true love and compassion and empathy for your partner, you probably will see and hear that she probably apologizes a lot, you know. So think about that and um, be intuitive. Be intuitive and, and sensitive to her, not just in, um, not just in emotional and verbal, you know, verbal ways that we say to our mouth. Be sensitive to her with physical touch as well. 
But from there, you know, when it concerns physical touch, the same thing that I said, approach her when she is calm, when she's not doing a task, when she's not cleaning or, you know, doing some, some work, doing some um, personal work or accounting or paying bills or cleaning or cooking or whatever. And don't approach her when she is doing something because you've already made it clear to her that you don't necessarily respect the things that she needs to do, the things that she needs you to help her with. Now, I'm, I'm speaking generally, generalizations, and making generalizations because I don't know particularly why you would have landed on this video. I don't know if it was like, you know, I don't know the circumstances. But somehow, some way, your partner felt neglected, whether that was emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, Somehow your partner felt neglected and you need to um, you need to approach that in a certain way. So when it comes to physical touch, the same thing. When she's busy and she's really focused on a task, don't come to her then. Come to her when she's calm, relaxed, for example, when you're sitting on the couch together, um, watching a movie, when you're in the bed, when you're holding hands, um, you know, taking a walk or something. At that moment, you know, stroke her face, you know, pu pu push her hair back and give her a kiss and say, baby, I know that I, I, um, I did this the other day wrong. And even if you, if you, even if you get the circumstance of what you did wrong, the fact that, you know, if, if she's mad at you because, um, you said that you guys were going to go on a date last Saturday and you didn't, um, and you finally figured something out and 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 then you think like oh okay she's mad at me because i didn't vacuum clean in the living room the other day even if you go to her and say baby i'm really sorry that i didn't vacuum clean in the living room the other day i know that's why you're you're angry at me but i just want to let you know that i love you so much and um i care about you and i i want to be there for you um stroke her on the cheek you know kiss her on the cheek even if it's if it's that tense you know where it's that hard kiss her on the cheek you know you don't have to ask permission just kiss her on the cheek and, and a lot of times I feel like that's what women want we don't want you to ask permission or anything just do something I want you to do something uh, I can't remember what movie that's from and then she might say no I'm not mad at you because you didn't vacuum clean in the living room the other day I'm mad at you because you we were supposed to go to the movies last the last Saturday so you see that even though you might have misinterpreted what she was mad at you about altogether, the fact that you got the ball rolling, the fact that you even put in some effort to just think, think, okay, God, what did I do? What did I do? That shows to her that you have a selfless love for her and that's going to get her to open up a little bit more. Um, and from there, when she says, no, I'm mad because we didn't get to go to the, the, on the date like we said that we would. From there, continue to practice that empathy. Continue to practice that intuition. Don't be too, too touchy-feely at that point, you know, because it takes steps, you know. Like, women with physical touch, you know, it's just like when a woman um, loses her virginity or when a woman, um, when you're dating someone and, and, a, and you have, have uh, sexual relations with a woman for the first time, Generally, in order to do that, women need to be in love. Lots of people have had sex without love, and I'm one of them. You know, plenty of people have sex without love. But generally, you know, women need to have some sort of emotional connection to you. And that's even more true in a marriage, even more true in a relationship where you've been together for a very long time. It's still true. For her, you know, lights to get turned on, in other words, she needs to feel very close to you in an emotional way. So in the beginning, when, you, when you've when you broken that first wall, when you've broken that first piece of ice, don't go straight into touch. Don't go straight into a lot of lovey-dovey, just all of that stuff. Because, man, you, when you do that, even when a, a woman is not mad at you, let me just say this. When you come off as extremely, extremely thirsty, when a woman's just, like, sitting there minding her own damn business, Every once in a while, that's really, like, fun. A woman's like, oh, what's gotten to you? But a lot of the times, you know, it seems to us to be, like, I don't want to say objectifying, but it seems a little thirsty. It seems like, um, you know, it, 
if, if it, both people really have to be in the mood for that. And so, and it needs a little bit of build up. Like I said, start with those grazes on the cheek. Start with some light kisses on the cheek, with some hugs, with some cuddles, you know. And if you're reading the mood is right, then that's when you can go in and you can do your whole suave move that you got put together. But, um, yeah, don't come across as thirsty. And, and if you remember back to a time maybe before, back when you were dating, you know, if you remember someone who was really needy, really just like seemed like they needed a lot of attention and, um, it's not, yeah, it doesn't have the effect that you want it to. So that would be my advice to you guys. I hope that this has helped. If you have any questions, you can of course put it in the comments. If you want to, you can also go and follow me on Instagram, um, at is the real Najwa. And you can send me questions and things there as well. I just cannot guarantee that I will answer it immediately. But I will try. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get better, guys. So um, with that being said, thank you so much. Please do me a favor. If you haven't already, click the like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you always know when I post video. And I'll see you in the next one.